I'm not gonna waste your time. This is simply just how you can become as productive and as focused as you can with biohacking. Now, the first way is exercising. Now, most people already exercise and that's really, really good. But if you don't, then not exercising will make you feel tired, lethargic, and just obviously exercising, exercising is good for you. So not doing it is gonna have a negative effect on you. Because if you don't exercise, and I find this with myself, if there's a day I don't exercise whatsoever, my sleep will be significantly worse. That's because you have to use your body and use the energy in your body so that you can replenish the energy when you go to sleep. Now, cardio is generally better for this, but any sort of exercise, including like strength training or bodybuilding, that's still good. Now, the second way is sleep, and I'm gonna go into a lot of detail with this one. You need at least nine hours of sleep. If you're around my age or you're still young, like under 25, I think it is, you need at least nine hours of sleep to be at your like maximum full focus productivity. And that's not nine hours in bed, that's nine hours of sleep. So maybe nine and a half or 10 hours in bed is what should be best for you to get the most productivity out of yourself. Now, no work, no exercise or eating near your bedtime. Work, it keeps you awake, it keeps you in work mode if you're thinking about work. So, and you don't wanna be in work mode when you're trying to get to sleep. So just try and avoid your work when you're getting to sleep. No exercise, because obviously exercise, it wakes you up and gets your blood going and everything. Obviously, that's not going to be good near your bedtime. And no eating, and that's because your body needs to digest the food when you've eaten, and your body can't do anything when you're, while you're digesting. You can't work, you can't exercise, and you can't sleep while you're digesting. So just try and avoid food for the first hour or so before you go to bed, because that means there won't be any food you're digesting that will help you get to sleep as best as possible. Another thing to help your sleep is to avoid light at all costs. When you're about to go to sleep, just avoid every single light, because when you see a light here, your body instantly just thinks it's the sun, because when we were cavemen, yeah, the only light we would have was the sun, or maybe like fire. But the only main light source we had was the sun. So when your body and your eyes see light, it thinks it's the sun. And if it thinks it's the sun, it's going to think it's daytime. And if it thinks it's daytime, it's going to think that you shouldn't go to sleep. So if you see light, your body's going to keep you awake, yeah? So you just want to avoid all light as possible. Make your room a cave. Make it as dark as humanly possible, basically. To so close your blinds and everything. And what you can actually do is, like, you know the little lights on your, like, monitors or your TV and everything? I don't really do it because it's, I don't see the point of it. But a lot of people say just to tape it over to get that little bit of light gone. And apparently that helps you. I should probably try that, but I haven't actually done that yet. And also using a blue light filter on all your devices, that makes the uh, light more orange. And if, you're, like, if your eyes see like dim orange light, it's going to think it's the sunset, which means your eyes are going to think it's like nighttime soon. So just put a blue light filter on all your devices. That really, really helps your sleep. Now, optimizing your temperature for sleep. Here we go. Have a hot shower before bed because I actually look at, I'll just go into it. When you go to sleep, yeah, you're like let's say this let's say this is your like temperature when you're awake. This is your temperature when you're asleep here. It's a little bit lower. So if you want to get to sleep as well as you as well as possible, you need to like lower your temperature. And you can do that really fast by hearing it out. Having a hot shower. I know it sounds kind of stupid. When you have a hot shower, yeah, your normal temperature increases, yeah. But when you get out of the shower, your temperature like drops below the temperature you were at before because that's your body cooling you down, cooling you down, and it cools you down past the temperature you were at when you went in the shower. If that makes sense, so having a hot shower will cool you down, and that'll be better for your sleep. And then also make your room cold. Open your window, turn on your air conditioning, whatever. Make your room as cold as possible. I'm not saying to be cold. Make your room as cold as possible, and then use a blanket or whatever, whatever to keep yourself warm, because that's how like the cavemen slept and everything yeah they'd be in a cold cold cave but then they'd have their like wolf jackets or whatever on them yeah so make yourself warm but keep your window open or your ac on or whatever and make your room cold so keep yourself warm room cold and the next thing it sounds kind of stupid but to tape your mouth hang on taping your mouth with micro pore tape i'll give you a demonstration i'll explain what it is and i'll give you a demonstration when you tape your mouth with micro pore tape it forces you to breathe through your nose and not only is that healthier for your oxygen levels and everything, it also helps your facial structure because, you know, you've probably seen that image, like mouth breathers, like when they're breathing through their mouth, their face is more like, like, it's like that. It's like, it doesn't look as attractive or nice as someone who's a nose breather, yeah? So it also helps that, and it also helps your sleep quality because you get more oxygen in when you breathe through your nose. You get, it, it gets to your brain better or something like that, and it just helps your sleep. So just getting this micro pore tape, you can get it off Amazon, yeah? And you've got to get it, I'll do a demonstration. You've got to get a little bit. 
It's not scary at all. And a lot of people think like, oh yeah, but what if I need to breathe in the night? Like what if my nose gets blocked or anything? Your nose doesn't get blocked when you use this because you're breathing through your mouth. Yeah, so you just get a little bit. I've kind of done it really wrong. It's not the best now. Mm -hmm. See, I can literally, I didn't even have to pull it. I kind of pulled it off a little bit, but you can literally just go like, like that and it comes off. It's really, really easy. And actually I've got like, if I can get it, I don't know where it is. Oh no. I've got like 12 rolls or something and it was like a tenner. So it's really, really cheap as well. And trust me, that really cheap investment will massively, massively increase your quality of sleep. It just... <coughs> this stuff is honestly mad for improving your sleep quality and it's so easy to do as well. Now the next part of this biohacking guide, which is kind of related to sleep, is waking. You've got to wake up correctly. Yes, there is ways to wake up wrong. You have to wake up correctly. Waking up at sunrise, so for me right now, sunrise, or well not sunrise, but when it's just becoming light, it's about seven o'clock for me. So I usually wake up about that time when the sun is just coming up. Yeah, and that's that's the time the caveman. I'm relating everything back to caveman times here, and that's because like when we were, our bodies when we were caveman and our bodies now they're no different. It's literally just our like situation is different. We've now got houses and technology and everything, but our bodies are still the same as cavemen. So we want to replicate the same experience we had when we were cavemen because like that's how we evolved to live. Yeah, if that makes sense. So so I wake up when it's just becoming light. Yeah. And then you just want to get as much light into your eyes as possible. Sunlight preferably. That's why I wake up when it's just getting light to get as much sunlight in your eyes. But you can also just turn your like screen brightness up or like have your lights on or anything. Just get as much light into your eyes as possible because that tells your body that it's becoming light. It's like the opposite of the avoid lights at night, yeah? When your body sees the light, it thinks it's the sun, so it thinks it's daytime, which will wake you up better. The next thing to do is to not use your phone for 30 minutes after waking up. 30 minutes is just like the minimum. If you can do more, then do it. And that's simply because when you use your phone straight after you wake up, yeah, it like, it just puts so much brain fog into your mind. I don't actually know why it does, but just using your phone straight after you wake up, it just puts so much brain fog into your head. And if you use your phone straight after you wake up, the rest of your day is just pretty bad. It's not going to be as good as if you just did, avoided your phone. And if you really, really have to use your phone straight after waking up, yeah, then at least put a blue light filter on because that also just helps stop brain fog. And then also exercising after you wake up, just doing light exercise. So press ups, literally anything like leg raises, squats, literally anything that increases your heart rate running, literally anything that will increase your heart rate because that just exercise, obviously it wakes you up and it adds to the contrast between sleep time and waking time, if that makes sense. Right, the next biohack, and you probably already know this one, is cold showers. Yes, cold showers. I preach this so much. Cold showers are so, so, so good for you. They're like the opposite of a hot shower at night. You know, a hot shower at night, it decreases your body temperature. Well, the cold shower does the opposite and it increases your body temperature because your temperature goes down when you get in the shower, yeah, but as soon as you get out, your body temperature goes up past the temperature at when you went in the shower. And that helps you wake up again because your body temperature needs to increase when you wake up. They also fix your dopamine levels. They actually give you loads and loads of dopamine. And dopamine, it's sort of the feel-good chemical, but it also makes you motivated. Dopamine makes you motivated to do stuff. Now, cold showers, they give you loads and loads of dopamine. They give you testosterone too. And they also take away cortisol. Obviously, testosterone is like the male hormone that makes you more driven and goal-orientated. Cortisol is like the stress hormone that makes you feel stressed. So cold showers will make you feel more motivated more driven and less stressed. So that's a pretty good combo already. They also just make you feel great, obviously. Also, sort of thing, um, cold showers, they give you a greater high than cocaine. That's pretty mad. They make you feel better than cocaine. I actually did a full video on like the benefits of cold showers because there are so many and they are so good. So just start doing cold showers and yeah. The next biohack is simply just hydration. This is by far the easiest one here. Simply just drinking enough water. Because your body, your body needs water to survive, obviously. So you want to have enough. If you want your brain to function at maximum productivity and everything, you need enough water. This is so easy to do. Just drink enough water. What's the limit here? What I've got? At least four liters a day slash one gallon slash eight pints. So that's how much water you need at minimum to function, yeah? I usually drink what I usually drink about five liters a day, so that's I don't know what that is in gallons or pints, but just at least four liters slash one gallon slash eight pints, like so easy to do. So you might as well do it. And also don't drink squash or fizzy uh, drinks or whatever. They're just simply not as good as just pure, there's no water in this, but just pure 
clean water, just normal water is just so much better for you. And please, please don't be one of the nerds that say, oh, I don't like the taste of water though. Just Water doesn't have a taste, bro, just deal with it. The next biohack is having a good diet. And again, this one's pretty, pretty obvious. Eating clean, eating healthy, avoiding processed foods. It's so good for you. I've said this so many times before, diet, yes, diet, it just helps you in so, so many ways. Having a good diet will just help you in like, so many different aspects of your life. And obviously it'll also increase your productivity and that's because of the gut brain axis. Why am I pointing at my chest when I'm saying brain? Your gut and your brain are so hyper connected through something called the gut brain axis. I'm not like a proper biologist or anything, but your gut and your brain are just really, really heavily connected. So if you eat good, and eat clean, then that means your gut's healthy. If your gut's healthy, then your brain's healthy, which means you can be more productive and everything. And if you wanna be as productive as possible, I recommend to avoid carbs as much as possible. I can't really do this because I live with my parents and eat their food, but like, just if you wanna be as, as productive as you can, just try and avoid carbs as much as possible because eating carbs makes you feel lethargic. And if you wanna be even more productive, and this is the next point, it's fasting. Yes, fasting, it's intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is where you just don't eat for parts of the day. The easiest way to do this is to simply to wake up early and don't eat anything and then work. That's what you should do if you wanna get as much work done as possible. Wake up, don't eat anything, fast, and then work. Because when you've just eaten, I think it's about 60% of your energy goes into digesting, which means you've only got 40% of your energy left for working. So if you wanna be as productive as possible, yeah? You need to have a hundred percent of your energy, which means you can't be digesting at the same time as working. So simply just fasting will help you to be so much more focused, so much better. And another thing, when you're hungry, you're so much more driven and so much more motivated. And that's because when we are cavemen, yeah, we would wake up and we wouldn't be able to eat straight away. We'd have to go and hunt before we could get the food. We'd have to hunt for the food. Now, the caveman hunt is the equivalent of our like deep work or whatever. So. We need to work and then eat. And that's because when we're working, we're hungry for the food. So we're more driven because we want the food. And then the last biohack is meditation. Biohacking is also your brain. It's not just your body. And meditation clears all your mind of thoughts. There's no thoughts in your mind whatsoever. And that is so good for working perfectly because if you haven't experienced this, experience this bro it's honestly magical but it's having zero thoughts in your mind whatsoever while you're working getting so much work done it's such a good experience and meditation contributes to that because when you're meditating you're training your mind not to have any thoughts in it yeah so when you have no thoughts in your mind like and when you're working and you have no thoughts in your mind it's just so so good for your like focus and productivity so just start meditating one minute two minutes five minutes whatever just start because any amount of meditation is better than no meditation bro if this video helped you i'm going to ask you to subscribe and stay strong, brother.